Since Nvidia's RTX 30 graphics cards, the very same mobile GPU come with different total power usage, the so-called TGP. In general, the higher the wattage of a GPU is, the higher its performance. In my case, I got an RTX 3070 mobile in my laptop in a 115W TGP configuration. But there are laptops available with a 125W V-Bias, which can be boosted up to 140W TGP in certain situations. So, in this video, I want to try out if it's possible to simply use another laptop's V-Bias to get higher performance with mine. Well, spoiler, it works. But you need to find a working one. In the end, I will also show some data to show difference in performance. So, let's go. First and foremost, um, not all V-Biases work with your laptop. You can end up with a black screen unable to see anything, which would be bad of course. The worst case would be to end up without being able to boot at all. Um, even if this did not happen to me with any of the V-Boys I tried uh, today in this video, well, it's still a risk. So if you really want to do this, it's a good idea to take some safety precautions. First, open up GPU-Z and back up the current V-Bias of your GPU. Save it to somewhere, well, safe. <laughs> A copy on a USB stick is a good idea as well. Next, make sure you know someone who got a flash chip programmer with a programming clip or buy one yourself in case you end up with a non-bootable machine. I know it sounds terrifying, but it's easily recoverable with a flash programmer and your ROM backup. In worst case, every computer repair shop should be able to do this easily for a small fee. In my case, I tried multiple V-Biases and most of them ended up with a black screen, but the laptop still booted up to Windows. For these cases, I can recommend to enable the remote desktop functionality on your laptop running Windows 10 or 11. Usually, it is only available with Windows Pro versions and not the home versions, but you can download a third-party DLL to enable it. Follow the link in the video description. Using a remote desktop connection, you can still log in into your laptop and see the desktop environment even without a properly working GPU. This way you can flash another V-Bias as well, which I'm gonna show you next. You start by downloading a special version of NVFlash, which is a flashing tool by NVIDIA to update and backup your graphics card's uh, V-Bias, or so-called WOM. However, the original NVFlash does not allow to flash any V-Bias to any graphics card. It checks the different IDs and throws an error if they do not match. But we want to bypass the security checks and OMG Reflash is the tool which does that for us. Next, take a look at your graphics card's device ID in GPU-Z. The first 8 characters are very important and have to match with the new V-Bias. And to find one, it's best to visit TechPowerUp's VBIOS database. Now we can see that we just find a few VBIOSes, but if you choose unverified uploads, you will find a lot more. Just pick one which got a higher boost clock than your current one and you will see that there is a higher TGP rating in a VBIOS description indeed. Collect a few of these from different laptop models and save them in a folder which can be easily accessed from the command line terminal. Now is a good time to try out the remote desktop connection to make sure it works. Next open the PowerShell terminal in administrator mode, navigate to OMGV flash folder and follow the prompt as shown in the video. At first I pulled another backup from the original ROM and then I attempted to flash the first VBIOS from TechPowerUp. Now you get asked to type in YES in caps if you are absolutely sure you want to continue, then two more times asking for a YES and you are done. And finally reboot your laptop to trigger the GPU to reload its VBIOS. Well, for me my first two attempts um, ended up with a black screen, but it was still booting into Windows and I could connect via remote desktop as explained earlier. Then I tried again with different VBIOSes and finally Finally, my third attempt was successful and the laptop was giving me an image. Let's take a look at performance first and start with Port Royale as a synthetic benchmark. As you can see, the FPS increased alongside power, but not linearly of course. 
for 8.7% more power you put in, you gain 4% FPS, going from 115 to 125 watts. Well, that's not too bad. Putting in another 10 watts, so another 8% more power to reach 135 watts, you gain just 2.4% this time. So, you can clearly see that the performance gains fall off with higher power. Not even the jump to 140 watts can give you the former gain of 4%. In Cyberpunk 2077, the gains are a little lower, but follow the very same pattern. Higher power gives us slightly higher FPS, but falls off with higher wattage. Looking at the FPS itself, you might argue that the actual gains from 115 to 140 watts are not really noticeable, and, well, I must agree. But of course, comparing the whole different offered TGPs, which are sold on laptops, does make a difference. We scale from 50 FPS to 62 FPS, which is noticeable in most situations. So, if you are looking for a laptop, keep that in mind. It usually comes with a noticeable thicker laptop as well though, because higher power draw always means a thicker cooler is required. And finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider gives us no surprise either. It's pretty much the exact same story again. And of course, uh, with more TGPs also comes more heat. Especially when your laptop's cooling solution is not made for higher TGPs than stock. Well, but maybe you can counteract that a little by using a high-end thermal paste or liquid metal as thermal interface material. Quick hint, if you choose liquid metal, make sure to use a foam barrier, for example made out of acoustic foam for sound studios. Otherwise it might go wrong someday, uh, like with this desktop GPU shown in the video footage. Another important side note, and yes, it's a disappointing one, the 140W TGP are only achievable by Dynamic Boost 2.0. So, in situations your CPU uses less watts than a certain threshold, your GPU is allowed to use some extra watts up to its max rating, in this case 140 watts. The only way I know of to activate the highest rating permanently is to install the older NVIDIA driver 528.24, which is probably a bug in this particular driver version. It unlocks manual power control and uh, allows your mobile GPU's TGP to be controlled using the NVIDIA SMI command line tool. You just need to deactivate the NVIDIA platform controllers and framework device in the Windows device manager and then you can pass the TGP you wish to the NVIDIA SMI tool as long as it's in the vBoys's min and max range. If you really want higher TGPs on your NVIDIA GPU without the outdated driver, the only valid option really is a shunt mod as shown in another video before. In summary, cross-flashing another V-Bias can make sense if you want to gain some percent of performance, but don't expect too much. With higher power comes also a lot more heat and fan noise. Besides, pushing more power into your GPU VRM and its power stages will make them run hotter and degrade them faster. As a rule of thumb, I would not recommend to go any higher than 20% more power over stock. That's it for this video. Nothing more to say then. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.